Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here and welcome to another episode of Days of Night. Today I want to talk about the Nikon N75, also known as the Nikon F75 everywhere besides the US, except for Japan where it's known as the U2 for some reason. In my last video I did my first impressions on the Nikon F60. I am on a hunt for a backup 35mm camera to um, complement my Nikon F100. So the lenses have to be compatible. In this case, I'm using modern Nikon G lenses, um, AFS lenses, and uh, I need a camera that can use those, obviously. I also need a camera that will give me some of the features, at least, of a Nikon F100, and maybe some things the Nikon F100 can't provide like a lighter body, for example. I don't necessarily need something quite as robust as the F100, um, but I need something that can do, I would say, about 75% of the functions. If this is the first video of mine you've ever watched, then just a quick uh, recap. I limit myself to two cameras per format in order to be able to focus at the task at hand, which is getting the shot and not over-romanticizing cameras. I want good photography, not good cameras. I, that doesn't totally make sense, but I think you get the idea. So right now I've just got the Nikon F100 as my main 35 millimeter camera. I don't have a backup. I used to have a Nikon FE, but I started buying G lenses and those aren't compatible with the FE. I took the liberty of writing down some criteria that I want in my backup camera. Um, so ISO control, and uh, I wanted ISO control before. I wanted to be able to change the speed of my film in case I wanted to push or pull it, in case it's expired or I just want a higher speed. But now I have a second and even better reason for wanting ISO control. After many years of shooting film, I have finally taken the plunge and bought myself a bulk loader and 100 feet of HP5, and I'm gonna start bulk loading my film. I worked out the numbers, and I'm gonna save approximately 39% on my film. Two reasons why I haven't bulk loaded film before. Uh, the first being is extra dust. I'm concerned that when I transfer the roll of film into the bulk loader, I'm going to introduce more dust into my film negatives which will show up as black specks in the end result, being that they were already there when the film was exposed. The second reason being that I've experimented with a lot of different kinds of film over the years, and I haven't really settled on one film. I've finally done that. I am, I am going with HP5. I would love to stick with Tri-X, but I just can't justify the cost. It is, first off, it is the most expensive bulk film that you can buy at B&H Photo. And I'm just not happy with Kodak these days. And the less I can use of Kodak, the better. I almost went with Arista EDU Ultra 400 because it's even cheaper. Like, I think 10 or 20 bucks Canadian cheaper for a bulk roll. But, um, you know, I've just shot with more HP5 and I feel like I've got to settle on something and I should settle on something that I've got a bit more experience with. But I did shoot some EDU Ultra 400 recently at a Ukraine rally and I really like the results. So at some point I may, I may revisit it for sure. Uh, the next is uh, modern lens compatibility. Whatever Nikon I end up with has to be compatible with my AFS G lenses. So that's pretty simple. They've got to work with my lenses that I've got already. Because as I've said before, the more lens compatibility that I have, um, the less lenses that I need to use, and the more I can spend on each lens. The next one is I think my backup camera should be lighter than my F100. I think it should be like a, ideally a tight little package. Uh, it's not, I'm not 100% on this. It's not a make it or break it. If it follows all of my other guidelines and it happens to be the same weight or even a bit heavier, I think I can forgive it. But the F100 is about as big and as heavy as I want in a camera. The camera should also be inexpensive and easy to replace. So in an ideal world, I would just buy an F6 and call it a day. Just, there we go. However, um, it's impractical. 
it doesn't give me, at least for me, anything more than the F100 does. The F100 is a few hundred dollars. You can buy ones that are next to new for, I think, seven or 800 Canadian. Um, but then there's the cost of repair. And that's where it really becomes a deal breaker for me. I don't want to have to spend hundreds of dollars to get it repaired if it uh, something goes wrong. So for the backup body, it should be something that I can just sell as broken and buy another one. So at the very max, like a $200 camera. And then last thing on the list, I want to be able to control the metering and I'd like to be able to have a spot meter with it. Um, I've noticed that some Nikon models uh, don't change from matrix metering mode unless you go to manual, in which case it goes to center weighted. I don't like that. I want to be able to control my metering modes between matrix, center weighted, and I want there to be a spot option as well. But with all that being said, let's get started. So the Nikon N75 or F75, or for some reason U2, was released or at least introduced in February 2003, right on that overlap between film and digital, where people were starting to buy more digital cameras and film cameras were getting eh, kind of cheap and flimsy. And the first thing that you're going to notice about the F75 or N75. I'm probably going to be switching back and forth here between the two. I think I've got an N75. The first thing you're going to notice about the N75 is that it's light and plasticky, which for me, I don't care. It's uh, had 19 years to prove that a plastic camera isn't necessarily going to fall apart. And I like the lightweight. Um, when I use the camera, in my tests, one of the things that I enjoyed was being able to pull the camera out of my bag with a lot less effort. And I mean, in the F100, it's not heavy, it's not hurting me or anything. Um, but when you're switching between two cameras, um, like I was, I had an F100 with a telephoto, and I had a wide angle with the F75 or N75, I'm going to keep doing that, sorry is that, um, you know, switching back and forth, it was a lot easier just to grab the small lightweight camera out of my bag. I could probably use a bigger bag, which is the reason why I want the smaller model. I'm rambling. I'm rambling. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to show you some of the features of the N75. Uh, not all the features. This is by no means a manual. Um, I'm not an expert on it. This is a first impressions video. But I will definitely show you some of the things that I found interesting, some of the features I have enjoyed, some of the ones I didn't care about, and some of the ones I didn't care for. After that, I'll show you some test photos, and then I'll give you some pros and cons and let you know if this camera is even worth owning. So here it is the Nikon N75, and I used my 24 to 120 millimeter F4 GED lens, and as you can see, it makes it absolutely just a beast of a camera completely defeats the purpose of of a small compact uh, body let's just uh, give it a quick weigh in here and see what we're dealing with as far as how much weight it adds to it so 1.167 kilograms uh, with the lens and a mere 405 without it yeah, the lens on its own, well, we don't need the lens cap, that doesn't technically count. Um, the lens on its own is 742, which is, man, that's almost twice the weight of the camera itself. Yeah, that is, that is crazy. Uh, just for the sake of not being bulky, I'm going to do the rest of this demonstration with a 50mm f1.8G. Which, by the way, this total package here weighs less than the other lens on its own. It didn't feel awkward out in the field either. I do want to point that out. I just think it's funny when, when people put giant lenses on tiny cameras. One of my Discord members showed us some photos the other day. They put a Pentax 6.7 lens on an APS-C digital camera. And it looked um, even crazier than that demonstration I just gave you. Anywho... Uh, let's go over some of the basic features of the camera. You've got your 
classic modes on the side here. Your program, shutter, manual, aperture priority. And then you got your sport, landscape, portrait, uh, nighttime, and macro modes. Uh, one of the other things I love about this camera is that you can go from single to continuous. And then here's your custom functions as well, where you can go through your custom functions and change what you need to. Um, pretty easy access there. I tend to keep it at single. Um, I'm not doing a lot of burst mode shooting and this particular camera is like less than two frames a second anyway, but uh, you know, I'm conserving that, I'm conserving that film. So uh, continuous shooting and burst modes are not my friend. It's got a pop-up flash, which I don't use, um, but some of you might find that handy. It's got an auto bracketing mode on the side here. In order to change the settings for your bracketing, all you gotta do is hold down the button and then dial through with the main dial. Another great function about this camera is the uh, illuminator. Can't really see that, but that will light up your LCD panel. Uh, you've also got your exposure compensation dial, which will go up to three stops in either direction, which is fantastic. On the back here, you've got uh, different focus points modes. You got your automatic, your single point, and then multiple point selection. Nothing, nothing really new there. Nothing to write home about. There's the AF assist lamp on the front. Uh, on the bottom here, though, a lot of you will enjoy the fact that there is a depth of field preview. One thing that I did not include in my last video was how the camera sounds. You'll just have to take my word for it. The F60 is a loud camera. I felt, I felt like I stood out when I was photographing the Ukraine rally. I don't like attracting attention to myself, especially when I'm trying to get candid shots. So that was a big issue with me. But I'm gonna demonstrate now how it sounds when it loads and then how the shutter sounds. That's about it as far as my takeaway from the N75. I'm going to show you some test photos now. Here are some highlights from a recent Ukraine rally I attended. Oh, two actually um, over the weekend. There was one on the Saturday and the Sunday. The one on Sunday was supported by the mayor and local MPs, which I was very happy to hear and see. So enjoy. So there are my highlights. I hope you enjoyed those. I didn't particularly like what I ended up with as far as the shots go this time around. Sometimes you sometimes you just shoot a couple rolls of film and you don't like the results. I don't think these are terrible photos. I think I could have done a little bit better, but the main thing was that I was using expired slide film and it was very apparent that it was expired. While I did get more or less a proper exposure 
from the two rolls of film. What I didn't get was good color. Uh, there was quite a bit of shifting, especially into the magenta range, the magenta and blue range. There was almost no green to be had. I had this one photo I took of a young woman with like green hair, and it did not appear green at all in the photo. But uh, yeah, the thing about expired slide film is that even when it turns out okay, like scannable and proper exposure, it is so curly. I fought so hard with this film to get it on the holders that I, I'm ready to swear off expired slide film altogether. And it's a good time for me to do that because I'm down to, I think, just one or two rolls of expired slide film left in my fridge, and then that's it. My local camera store is selling Ektachrome for $33 a roll, and I'm just I'm just done with slide film that is way too expensive for me. Maybe some medium format in my fridge that I'll shoot with my Pentax 6.7, but as far as 35 millimeter slide goes, uh, game over, man. <laughs> anyway, some pros and cons of the Nikon N75. First off, right out of the gate, it's lightweight. I liked the lightweight nature of it, even though I used it with a 24 to 120 millimeter beast of a lens. Snapping on a 50 millimeter f1.8 makes it this awesome, tight little package, very low key. Uh, when I use it again, I will definitely try it with either my 35 or my 50 millimeter lens. Uh, other pro, and this is specifically for me, is that it takes modern glass, AFS G lenses, and that is like priority one for me. I spent way too much money on Nikon glass in the last year. I bought a 50 millimeter 1.8, a 35 millimeter 1.8, and the 24 to 120 f4 and that i believe comes to around two grand way more that i've spent probably in the last 10 years on glass put together one thing that i really liked about it over the f60 which i've already uh, gotten rid of by the way is that it is much quieter the f60 was not only heavier it was louder and by a long shot the n75 has a quiet shutter, and the rewind mechanism is probably quieter as well. I didn't test it, I probably should have tested it. The other thing that the N75 has is custom functions. Things like changing the uh, duration of a self timer, turning off the AF assist lamp, uh, you know, a bunch of other little functions. I believe there's 12 different custom functions, don't quote me on that. But yeah, it, it helps to be able to, you know, make those little minute changes of things that you don't necessarily want, especially the AF assist lamp. So this is neither a pro nor a con, it's kind of neutral, but the fact that it pulls out the entire roll and then you shoot backwards into it, it's a little, it's a little bit of both. So the pro of it is that if you accidentally open the back or it gets dropped and the back flies open, all the photos that you've taken so far are saved because they're in the canister. Um, one of the cons is if there is a light leak along the border, then all of your photos are going to get um, exposed to that light leak. The people who've had light leaks on their back door um, of their cameras know that the longer you take in between shots, the more it is exposed to that light leak. So if you shoot a quick roll, or if you've got your camera in your bag for the majority, you can sort of cheat or subvert the light leak, at least the majority of it. Um, but having that whole roll exposed to a potential leak, not so great. While you do save time unloading your film canister in between rolls, uh, you still have to pop in the new one and wait for it to pull the whole roll out. And I've found that, you know, it's, you know, one step forward, one step back. So it doesn't really do anything for me there. If you're really hell-bent on having the numbering system work in your favor, well, then it's going to be complete opposite for you when you use the N75, because 36 is your first shot and one is your last shot. 
Now, in the case of my uh, expired slide film, it had the old thinner lead, which I had to cut off in order for the camera to catch the film and load it, uh, which actually cost me a couple of shots. So a 24 roll was now a 22 roll, and I believe I got 33 out of the 36 roll. The advantage to that, though, is if you have a partial roll that uh, you know exactly how many frames you have. Like, let's say, and I've done this before, uh, you shoot part of a roll of film, uh, you cut it off in the dark room and develop part of it, and then you've got part of a canister left with an unknown number of frames. Um, pulling the film out and cutting it has sort of made you lose count. And uh, you put the roll of film into the N75, and it pulls out the whole roll, telling you exactly how many frames you have. No guesswork there. I think that's probably the greatest advantage of having it. Now, I would love that for uh, when I start bulk loading my film, except it brings me to my first con, which is no ISO control. If this thing had the ability to change the speed of my film, it'd be fantastic. And it defaults to 100, um, not 400, which is what I normally shoot at. So I'm forced to underexpose by two stops with the exposure compensation if I want to shoot at 400. It is frustrating. And I know people out there say that it's a prosumer camera and it's meant for the amateur. Well, you know, a lot of people are saying that it has most of the features of the F5, including the great Ken Rockwell. So which is it? Again, I think it's a basic function to have ISO control. It is one of the three main things that create a proper exposure. So relying on DX, really frustrating. Also, no meter control and no spot metering. I touched on this at the beginning of the video, and you know my reasoning behind that. I want control. I want to be able to not have to use or rely on exposure compensation in backlit situations. I want to have metering control at the very least, and I'd also like to have a spot meter. It has matrix metering, it has center weighted metering, but the only way you can use center weighted is to switch to manual. Why? 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 <laughs> I don't like it. So all those pros and cons has led me to say that for now, this will be my backup uh, camera, but it is only a placeholder. It is only to have a backup camera. The F60 didn't make the mark. I didn't like using it whatsoever. Um, another reason why I like the F75 more, or N75, whatever, uh, is it has multiple focus points, so one in the center, and that 12, 3, 6, and 9, um, whereas the F60 just had one in the center. So, yeah, I was not happy with the F60, not even enough as a placeholder. I already had the F75. I had bought them around the same time. The F75 will be my backup camera only for now. I know a lot of you in the last video said that the F80 is where it's at. I'm going to get there. I am definitely going to try the F80. So if you're wondering why this video isn't about the F80, I've already purchased the F75. So that's the reason. I've already bought these cameras a couple months in advance. I'm just getting to them now. I am listening for sure. So if you have other suggestions besides the F80, I'm definitely listening. But that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, you know, throw a thumbs up. Apparently a thumbs down you can't even see anymore, so there's no point in leaving me one of those. Uh, you can also support me on Patreon, where uh, you can get things like early access, free prints, and your name in the credits. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic. <laughs>